Can you see it? Yes, man. Okay, good. <coughs> uh, let's see started the recording as well. <coughs> yeah, good. I should have named this uh, the safe sect. Okay, Bismillah, Salatu Salam, Allah Rasulullah, wa Allah Alihi wa Sahbi Ajma'ana Ma Baad. Today, inshallah, we're going to learn about Al Firqa, Al Najia, Al Mansura, Ila Yom Qiyamah. The saved sect, which which is supported by Allah till the Day of Judgment. Um, this the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like we covered before, said that uh, the nation. Muslim Ummah will divide into 73 sects. All of them will go to hellfire except one, which is the saved sect. And they're the ones who are following Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's way. So basically, um, it is, if we say it correctly, it is the manhaj of the Salaf as salih the way of following the way of the Salaf as salih So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever follows the my way and the way of... Uh, my companions okay so basically we're going to look at where this word comes in this word self and what it means so uh, the definition of self or salafism is a method it's a way of methodology that calls for the understanding of the quran and sunnah um, according to the understanding of the pre predecessors predecessors of this nation like taking their approach and following muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's way and his companions and his followers and the followers of the followers. Um, so re taking Islam how they represented it and their approach and uh, the Quran and the authentic hadith and then trying to avoid all foreign um, influences from the core, if I correct this translation, from the core of Islam and its teachings and sticking to what's been transmitted to us, okay? Um, this is basically the aqidah of the Salaf and it represents this Islamic ideology which is in opposition to other Islamic sects. So all the other ones is different to them, it's different to what they're doing. Um, so the word Salaf, what does Salaf mean? Salaf means the past and the predecessors, the people that came before us. So when you say Salaf al Salih, the righteous predecessors, okay? which means the companions, the successors, and the followers of the successors. Because the Prophet Sallallahu praised the first three generations. He said, خَيْرُ الْقُرُونِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ He said, um, the, be the best people are my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Then after that, there will be people who, uh, they will testify, but they're not, deserving of testifying, they will betray, they shouldn't be trusted, and they're basically, amongst them are lies, they lie, they lie. Okay, so if we say, what does Salafiyya mean? It means, as Ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah, he explains, he's, he says, is to follow the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu his companions, because they are predecessors, okay? So that's what Salafism is, and it's, Basically, an approach of understanding the Quran and Sunnah. We don't want to understand it with logic, with you know other interpretations which are not according to the companions or the the self. So, following the Quran and Sunnah upon the understanding of the those pre nations, those nations that came before us. I mean, the first three generations of this nation of the Ummah. That's what it, that's what it means. Okay. So, understanding the legal texts in the Quran and Sunnah. And referring it to that to them, was that clear? You guys with me? Yes, yeah. Okay, good. So when did where why where did this word come about? Why did people have to say before we had Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, which is the people of the Sunnah and and the Jama'ah, because I was in a Hadith. Um, but why did the word Salafi come about? So it came about. Because when there were d disputes and uh, around the fundamental uh, uh, elements of the religion, and there was theologic theological sects like new groups we talked about that came about. So 
all of them, they were claiming to be following the Salaf. Okay, all of them were saying we remember like the Shia that said we're following, um, you know, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's family. Uh, Sufis were saying we're following, um, you know, we're following uh, Salman al Farisi, and they had a couple of companions that they uh, liked, or the Ahlul Sufa. So they all were claiming to have people like the companions basically following them their way. So that's why people, the, some of these, um, they started to use this word. So basically, Salafism, or to be a Salafi, is just an extension from the method of the Prophet his companions, his followers. And so it's the way of the people of Hadith or tradition. Especially in the third century, when you found in the face of Mu'tazila, who were those who were using Greek logic to understand Quran Sunnah, and they started to talk about Allah's attributes during the Abbasid era. So there's one sheikh who went against them. His name was Ahmed ibn Hanbal. So did I? Did I jump from this? Okay, I must have jumped this. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'll continue. <clears throat> so um, anybody who went against the people who were of bid'ah, they were called Ahl Sunnah Jama'ah. They were the Salafis. So Ahmed bin Hanbal in his time, um, people were making these claims that you know the Quran was created. They were using Greek philosophy and, and they were interpreting the Quran Hadith, and he was warning against this. And they had the Khalifs as well, the leader Khalif al mutawakkil Actually, before him, uh, the Khalifa, who was commanding people that they have to believe that the Quran is created. And he was tortured for not accepting this because the Quran is not created, it's the words of Allah. And uh, so he was called like the Ahl Sunnah. But he was at that time the person who was following the prede predecessors of the Salaf. Another sheikh who, uh, so even like we just talked about Ahmed ibn Hanbal, um, so he was also known for collecting the hadith and following the hadith, and also he had his own madhab in fiqh. So he was the first most important uh, personality. The second one was uh, Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay, so during his time, and he was living in the 7th century, so during his time there was a lot of uh, misconceptions and also there was the fall of the Abbasid Empire and uh, I don't know if you heard about Genghis Khan, Genghis Khan and the Tatar and how they conquered a lot of the Muslim lands and they they destroyed all the Muslim books so during that time as well uh, there was a lot of people calling towards different ideologies methodology uh, there was also the Shia So he stood firm on the Sunnah, and he used to debate with uh, he used to debate with these people. He was called a Sheikh of Islam. He was very uh, he was a very eloquent, very intelligent uh, Sheikh, and uh, so he's known as also the reviver of the Sunnah and the uh, way of the Salaf. He wrote many books, and he had his uh, followers at his circle of scholars like Al Dhahabi. Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi, al Mazi, and others. The third most uh, influential uh, person who revived, personality who revived the way, the correct aqidah, was Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, who lived in the 8th century. So, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, um, people, you probably heard people say, oh, you're a Wahhabi. So, this is where they get it from. They take uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab's name. And they say basically whoever is following the, this way, then he's a Wahhabi. But we don't attribute ourselves to any individual. We attribute us, we, we associate ourselves to, you know, following the Quran and Sunnah. Is that clear? Can you hear me? Um, yeah. Okay. So, Muhammad and Abdul Wahhab as well, like we said, every person who stood up again for the truth and was telling people to go back to how uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. So he, during his time, he was uh, alive at the time when the Ottoman Empire was starting to fade 
and you know the Turkish uh, Ottoman Empire, they they were also uh, managing Mecca and Medina, and uh, basically there was a lot of there was a spread of Sufism and work worshiping um, graves and saints and all of that in Arabia. Even they didn't pray the in Mecca, they didn't pray the Salahs together. Every madhab was praying by themselves. That's how worse the division got. So he took the opportunity to also. Um, uh, he he got um, the Saudi government involved. At that time, the Saudi government was just forming. So he got authority on his side and he was able to get rid of all the uh, grave worship and all of that. And that's why they hate him a lot. They hate him a lot because he also used physical force. Uh, he used the authority to also get, um, um, get the message through to the people in Arabia. Also, there's other sheikhs, contemporary sheikhs, like we already talked about Nasruddin al-Albani, who spent his life trying to uh, go through the correct the hadiths and the chains, and uh, who is supporting, obviously, the correct way, which is going back to the Quran, Sunnah, and the understanding of the companions of the Salaf. There's other sheikhs like Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, rahimahullah, and Sheikh ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah, who are also known for one of the biggest sheikhs known for calling people to come back to, um, you know, to the understanding of the Quran and Sunnah, according to the uh, according to the Salaf, the three generations. So there's many more scholars. It's not like we're limiting it to them, but anybody who, you know, was calling people to go back to the way of predecessors would be counted as uh, an important personality. So obviously, this correct aqidah, which was already, it. It spread obviously around throughout the whole world, and especially like for example, you find in like in Asia, like in Pakistan and India and Bangladesh, the people who call themselves Ahl Hadith, the people of Hadith, they're the ones who are following the correct uh, the correct Aqid and, and Afghanistan. Then you have some other groups, uh, not groups, but I'm saying other basically people who associate themselves to attribute themselves to the way of the Salaf. Okay, so the books, the Aqidah books, and uh, most of, um, most of the, alhamdulillah, the people who actually want the truth, they will accept that there are some books which call people to correct Tawheed as well, correct the Aqidah. Um, like Muhammad Abdul Wahab, that's why they really hate him, because he wrote a lot of books. It was just hadith and verses and hadith, and that's why he just presented that in his book. And that's why they, they couldn't really say anything about what he said because it's all true. So the, that's a famous book he wrote, Kitab al-Tawheed by Muhammad Abdul Wahab and then his his grandchildren, they did explanations of it. There's one called Taysir al-Aziz al-Hamid and Fath al-Majid. And also another book which probably you might study is called Usul al-Thalatha and uh, the Three Fundamentals which is written by Muhammad Abdul Wahab. So these books are normally chosen because they get to the point and they're concise uh, and it removes a lot of uh, doubts. Okay, you've got other books written by um, also um, by like Ibn Taymiyyah. So Ibn Taymiyyah wrote a book about Iman, the book of Iman, talking about tawassul, like intercession and all of that. He wrote a very famous book called Aqid al wasati which talks about Allah's names and attributes, understanding it according to the Salaf, three generations before us, Al-Tadmuriyya, al hamawiyya So all these books, Basically, a, a very important book to study. Sharh al-Tahawi. Okay, al-Tahawi, uh, Tahawi, he wrote a book on Aqidah, which is accepted by many people. And uh, he teta, he explains how we should interpret, like, how we should understand the Quran so according to the, especially the correct Aqidah, according to the pre predecessors. And there's other books, Iqtidah Sarat al-Mustaqim, Kitab al-Sunnah, Itisam, by all these different sheikhs. Okay, so what is, are you guys with me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what is the methodology, the correct methodology of the people of the Salaf? How are they supposed to be? The people who follow the Salaf. So here, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says, follow and do not innovate. For you have been sufficed. Right? They, they've already done the job. All you need to do is follow. You don't need to come up with anything new, especially in the Aqidah. Um, and then, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz says, stand where the people stood. 
they stopped with knowledge and with penetrating insight they sought. They were stronger in revealing it, like these de debates, and by virtue, they were more capable, basically, if you, if you think about it. Uh, if someone says it happened after them, like these things came after them, then it's just innovation. So who, then who innovated except those who oppose the guidance and deviate from the sunnah? And he says they've described what basically solves the problem, heals the person, and they spoke sufficiently about it. So whoever does let, less than them is, a, is, is failing. Whoever does beyond them, okay, or does more than they did, then he's misguided or he's transgressed. Um, and so then he's, he said, if I just uh, summarize, he said, guidance is between that, not to be too extreme, not to be extreme, not to be lenient, but to be uh, following the Quran and Sunnah. Um, also, uh, this other sheikh said, adhere to the traditions of the predecessors, follow their way, even if people reject you, and be aware, be aware of the opinions of men. Right? Me, people just make up opinions based on their what they like, what they don't like, because they will beautify their words. Okay, and this last bit is very important because it tells us the correct like methodology. So this is a debate between Muhammad Abdul Rahman and Darami. He said to a man who was calling people to bid'ah, he said to him, "Did the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr?" Umar, Uthman, and Ali know about this. Let's say, for example, celebrating Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's birthday. Did, they, did Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's companion know about it? The answer would be, or did they not know about it? So he said, they did not know. So then he said, so something that they didn't know, you knew about it? Then the man said, no, 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 they knew about it. Because you can't say Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't know about this, and Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman, so he said, okay, they did know about it. Then he said, uh, the sheikh said, was it sufficient for them not to speak about it, nor to call people to it, or was it not sufficient for them? So, like, could they have called people to this, like, to celebrate his birth, Muhammad's birthday, or would they not be able to do that? They were able to do that. But they didn't bother, they didn't talk about it because there's no need. Then they said, yeah, that was, that was it, sufficient for them. They didn't talk about it. Then he said, so something that sufficed the Messenger of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his followers is not sufficient for you. So you're not happy just to stay away from this, like celebrating his birthday, even though Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, they, were, they didn't really need this. So the man had no reply. Then the Khalifa, who was listening, and he said, may Allah not suffice him who is not satisfied with what suffices him. So may Allah not make the person who's so may Allah not make the person who's happy with the, what they were happy with like uh, be happy at all. So basically, if a person comes with something new, like for example, what the Shia do, cursing Aisha and Ali, and claiming these things, nobody should swear at the companions. Like people who what they take their willies as. Saints and make du'a and did the companions do that? Did Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do that? No. So, so basically, anybody who this is the a very good example of what the Salaf means. The last question is: Are you guys with me? I'm gonna finish off now, inshallah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The last question is: Can a person call himself Salafi? Can he say, "I'm Salafi"? I don't really like to call my. I don't like to say I am my personally. I am. Salafi, I just like to say I'm upon the manhaj of Salaf. I follow the way of the Salaf. But if, let's say if a person said I'm Salafi, then you can divide it into two. If a person says I'm Salafi, and then he wants to establish like a party or group um, which are different from everybody else, and then he wants to make everybody misguided, then that's wrong. But if he says we are, like, because the Sheikh says in Uthameen answers here, he says, we are all Salafis who follow the Quran Sunnah. And he says, if a person means I'm following their way, like, because we're not actually, we're not a part of those three good generations, but we're following their way. So a person says, I'm following their way, then that's correct. Okay? Because we don't want to separate the Muslims and make them into 
all the groups, especially those who are following the Quran Sunnah, but you call them to follow um, the correct aqeedah, Wallahu A'lam. Um, so you would hear, you probably heard about people saying, you know, he's a Wahhabi. They like to, it's like when people talk about Islam, they like to say all oh, Muslims are terrorists. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's not a sect. Uh, it's not like a group. We are a sect because we are the saved sect. And the safe sect have this characteristic quality of following. It's not, it's not a title, it's something you have to earn, basically. Wallahu alam. Any questions? No, ma'am. Okay. You understand it uh, clearly? 